Welcome back. This is part two of the lecture on high modernism for the my art appreciation classes. I wanted to go back to the beginning just for a second, just a quick recap, in part because I, want, I was a little bit distracted with what with my cold and a number of family distractions. If you're noticing the music in the background, uh, my son is practicing his trombone. He's getting really good, um, but uh, so hopefully that won't bother you too much. Anyway. Um, so to recap, we, we went over the, the first lecture a little bit, just kind of reviewed some of the basic um, fundamental things that link all of modernist art and modernist um, aesthetics together, and then how that leads to the 20th century. Um, and it's especially on that issue of, um, uh, of honesty, like the, the shift from art being about, from being social realist to optical realist to eventually aesthetic realist where it's about the paintings really being about the formal purity of the painting itself uh, is pretty important um, and the other main point I wanted to make was that and I that I did make was that um, there's no there's no real divide between those artists that we think of of the 20th century that were pursuing abstraction and those that weren't but some were pursuing abstraction for the purpose of let's let me show you a, an extreme example of a real kind of reductive purity right essentialism right trying to get to abstraction that is almost removed from the original observation whereas much of uh, the 20th century abstraction was simply just an abstraction of what you saw so um, okay so that we left off with Pierre Bernard, who is, in a way, making abstract work. They are based on observations. They're paintings that say things about what you see about the world and about people in it. But they are also abstractions in that they are distillations of that world, distillations of that perception. Um, and really, um, Matisse is doing the same thing. It's just a different uh, degree of distillation. And so Matisse is one of the real big names of 20th century abstraction. And he's pursuing one way of really trying to create this kind of a very formal, pure, uh, reductive, abstract um, type of uh, 20th century art. And his version is very poetic um, and musical. And I think his interest in jazz is no uh, coincidence. And so it's a very different kind of uh, type of abstraction from what we'll see next with uh, Picasso and Brock. So Picasso and Brock were also interested in moving towards um, a, you know, a, a more formal uh, abstraction, but it for them it was much more concrete and much more perceptual. It was about the way we see things. As you can see from this first uh, painting that I'm showing of Brock's, right, this aqueduct, or I think a viaduct la stock. Um, this painting here, he's very much influenced by Cezanne. And w what he, and then later together with um, uh, Picasso, what they were pursuing was, and here's Picasso, this is early Picasso, but let's get to where, here with this painting by Portrait of uh, Vollard, um, this is the period where Picasso and, and Brock were pretty much painting together um, and spending almost all their time together. And in this period where they were working together, they were aiming for a type of abstraction, a type of formal purity that was about the real world, about the concrete things. Um, and a, so it's a very solid form of abstraction. And it's about perception. A lot of people make uh, the case, and I think there's a point to it, that it's also about perception through time. The idea that these are paintings kind of really showing how when we see things, we don't see it all at one way, but we see it as a series of moments here but let me go back to the, to the beginning with Brock right so here's Brock here's a very early painting of Brock um, and then right here this uh, bottle of fishes this is a painting he did you know at that same time period where he was collaborating um, with Picasso and here is whoops let's go back here is a painting um, that he did after that period um, after uh, World War One Brock and Picasso never quite um, were uh, paired, um, but uh, Brock did get back into painting, and his paintings of the 20s are really gorgeous. Um, and here with Picasso, we can see his work. This is representing some of the work he did. He was a much more prolific artist before um, before meeting up with Brock. You know, like that he had a much more uh, 
established career um, than Brock did. Um, and Demoiselle Davignon really kind of shows, if we go once again back to this one, right? George Brock is bringing this kind of aesthetic, and Picasso is bringing this kind of aesthetic, um, and it's very much the same aesthetic. And then together, they take those ideas that are already percolating in their painting, and they push them towards this. And they were both strongly influenced by Cezanne. But like um, Brock, after you know, after the war and into the 20s and 30s, Picasso's art went into a number of different directions, but much more personal sort of directions, but still about this type of um, abstraction and purity. And of course, we all should know Guernica really well by now, since we've seen it so many times. I'm only including one other cubist. I could have included uh, Juan Gris as well, but um, here I'm just going to include a leger. Um, and uh, two really beautiful paintings by him. And Leger really kind of emphasized the, that concrete, solid aspect that, that had its potential in Cubism. And this is probably a good place to end the next part before we get too 